He is the longest tenured Toronto Raptor and has led them with resilience bouncing back at every turn in the first quarter. Kyle Lowry was the leader and the igniter, but on the other side, answers. They've come for five consecutive seasons in this Warriors run from Klay Thompson and from Steph Curry, who did what he could to keep the Warriors' hopes alive. But Klay went down. Van Vliet rose up, and Daddy continued to make his newborn proud. And then this missed shot officially helped make the Raptors champions for the first time ever. Toronto, welcome the champions home. The celebration north of the border continues, and so does it inside the locker room for a team that's been reserved at every point, led, of course, by the Kawhi MVP of the finals in Kawhi Leonard, but no longer quiet. They are loud. They are strong. And let me tell you something. Uh, Jurassic Park, the movie, was loud at the box office. It was nothing compared to that crowd and the one in here that has already once serenaded their team with O Canada tonight. O Canada indeed last title for any team in that country. The Montreal Canadiens in 1993 was the same year that we saw the Blue Jays try and go for a third straight and miss after winning back to back and that was it. And now they're champions again. The man who helped incite that Raptor riot and Hall of Famer Isaiah Thomas, Grant Hill, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, and Kevin McHale and I'm the other guy who just gets to pass the ball to him. So let me pass the ball to Mr. Raptor himself and start there. What kind of feelings of pride do you have as you sit there and watch this trophy celebration and now the celebration for this team? I, I, I could not be happier for the country of Canada, for the Toronto Raptors and, and all their fans and the team, the players, management. I mean, truly just watching this dream come true for everyone here tonight. It's been a, a very emotional moment for me, uh, but I also want to acknowledge how great a champions the Golden State Warriors have been during this run. But, you know, the Raptors watching them celebrate and seeing the fans and just knowing where we all came from and to just see this dream really come true. I'm just glad I was alive to see it. Grant, when you it's talk really about it. adversity, right? A franchise, sometimes it's not just about a season. This is a franchise that has had that. Will players go there? Will they want to go there? A year ago, when we showed it, Jared alluded to it in the open of our night, that beside conversation after the last time it was Lebronto north of the border, right? A year ago, we're not going to go through this again. We will make changes. It takes a lot of guts. It's a family show, we'll use that word to go and give a franchise face in DeRozan, to rent to Kawhi without knowing whether or not you'll keep him. How about what it took to get here and from top to bottom, the risk taking that led to the championship run? Well, you make a great point there. I mean, this time last year when Golden State won, no one envisioned this right now happening. Toronto was a team that you almost felt like their window of opportunity had closed. They just couldn't get past Cleveland. LeBron James, decides to go out west and like you said you make a bold decision and bring it in a Kawhi Leonard who didn't guarantee he was going to stay it hasn't throughout this year and then you make some other moves and you bring in certain players uh, you bring in you, you fire a coach essentially who was coach of the year and you something about Nick Nurse that you identify that he's going to help this ball club there were calculated risk uh, obviously these risks have paid off but you have to do that I think at times uh, when you run an organization it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, there are a lot of head scratching a lot of people well is this going to work. Well you know what <laughs> it did work it validates Messiah it validates uh, his vision and uh, it, it was storybook in so many ways and, and really you, you got to just first of all as, as Isaiah said Golden State. You got you, you got to tip your hat to them not only as great champions but they showed so much heart throughout this series. They never quit. They competed. You know Steph Curry had a shot that you know he usually makes that could have sent this game to a game seven. Now I don't know who they would have put on the court in that game seven <laughs> with all the injuries they had but they fought like champions. 
but uh, they came up against a team that was determined. It was their destiny. It was their time. And, and congrats to the Raptors. Back. It's a game of stars. We've got stars and Hall of Famers on our desk. You had a team which is unlike any maybe we've ever seen in terms of the amount of them that you had. But you know from coaching and playing, it takes a team. So how about the fact that how do we get here? Yeah, Kawhi was brilliant. But Van Vliet hitting the big shots again. Siakam, a huge game again. Lowry, again a huge game. This was a team that for the first time in a final since 94 put up five starters with 17 points or more earlier in this series. How about the balance and the organization as a whole using everyone the way they did? Yeah, they developed their players well early. I mean, you know, Van Vliet comes in and he just, he made big shots down the stretch. You know, Siakam's just improving every single day and getting better all the time. So they, they I, I like the way they did it. Now, a big move by getting Kawhi Leonard. Let's just, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. This doesn't happen if Kawhi Leonard's not on the team. All these guys can improve all they want, and they lose to some team in the Eastern Conference. Kawhi Leonard was a difference maker on this team. But yet, he got, Kyle Lowry set the tone. He started off like a house on fire to start this game. And man, they all started saying, okay, this might be our night. You know what I mean? Because you come into this thing, you know it's the or last night in the article. And this place has had a lot of magic in it. And they knew coming in that they were going to have to get out to a good start. So it was a total team effort. And I tell you what, I was really happy for Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse took a lot of static the last yeah. game uh, for calling that timeout. He's not afraid to do, you know, he put a box and one in earlier in this series without ever practicing it. That takes guts as a coach, man, because you look and go like, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. <laughs> We've never done it. And it's the finals. I'm going box in one. And he wasn't afraid to experiment and do stuff. Different lineups, sat down Danny Green, put Van Fleet in there. So there's just a lot of positives to this, this uh, Toronto team. Since Kevin Durant, guys, became a member of the Golden State Warriors, the total number of games in the finals they had lost at Oracle going into this series, zero. They lost not one, not two, but three consecutive games yeah. in this building. It's the first time in the history of the finals that five consecutive games won by the team on the road. So much for home court advantage. We go on the road north of the border and we check in with Skeets who's live with what could only be described I would imagine as pandemonium. We saw the Cubs Skeets after all those years. I covered Boston 86 after the last time they'd won a World Series. Take us through what you're witnessing now for a team that had never been where they now are as champions. Yeah, it's a it's a controlled chaos. I will say that there's a dance circle going on to my left. There were fireworks going on to my right behind me. People are obviously having a good time. I will say before I freak out about the Raptors winning a title on live television, prayers up to Clay Thompson. That guy is a stone cold killer. He is one of the greatest shooting guards, I believe, when it's all said and done, we're ever going to see. You know, again, thoughts and prayers to him. Hopefully the injury isn't all that bad with the knee. Didn't look good, but People are, I will say, a little bit in shock. Maybe it was the way the game ended as well. There was the whole stoppage and is it over? How much time is left? And then, then the then the confetti started to rain. We had rain earlier in the day, and then it was confetti raining, and it was uh, it's pretty cool. I'm in shock. I know that being a Raptor fan, growing up a couple hours here from Toronto, and and then coming to Toronto over the last living here for 15 years, but it's uh. It's surreal. It's been a very long time in this city since they've had a champion, and, and they are going to celebrate all night. I know I am. I don't know where the late night Chinese food's going to happen. I've got to pick our spot there. Drizzy, Drake, where's the after party? You can tell me. Yeah, we're, this is going to be fun for a long time here. Well, we're just happy. Drake apparently invited Grant to an after party somewhere, so I know we're all going as plus ones. Uh, we'll check yeah, back in. Grant, with, Grant, yeah, Grant, text me, man. Come on, man. Shoot a text over. I'll text you, Skeets. I got you, dog. It's part all of right. the, the brotherhood at NBA TV. <laughs> Speaking of which, we got right. Trey Kirby, who is somewhere in the crowd amongst the peoples. Uh, another congratulations is due. So give me a sense of the sense you're getting from a group that has now three consecutive nights in a building you're not supposed to be able to win, Trey, been able to serenade the home team as they leave to O Canada as their team on the road wins. Oh, yeah, we've heard O Canada impromptu. We've heard dueling cheers. We've heard We the North. We've heard the North remembers. We the champs. I can barely hear myself talking. I feel like Section 102 has been annexed by Canada. They might just stay. So maybe this is Toronto West. I don't know. It's insane in here. All right, don't, 
Don't get lost. Make sure, because you're tall, and unlike me, you probably won't. We'll check back in with Trey. From all the festivities in the crowd, how about the team and everything that they had done? We mentioned Kawhi coming over, a big part of the deal, and a guy who also was a huge part of this team in Danny Green. Shot making, defense, and leadership. He is in a festive celebration with our own Kristen Lindley. Is it possible to describe this moment? No, uh, there's no words really. Um, honestly, just celebration actions. You see everybody just so happy. Um, brought one home, not just for us, but for 36 million people watching a whole country. Um, it's special, special to be a part of. Um, you know, just trying to enjoy it as much as we can. How would you describe the journey that it took to get here? The roller coaster. Um, you know, we never knew where we'd be at, especially since the trade dates and in other trades. And, you know, the guys that were with us early on, we did this for them as well. You know, JV, DeLon, CJ, uh, Malachi, Greg, all those guys, happy for them. Wish we could share that moment with them right now. But um, I said ups and downs, trades, this, that happening, injuries, in and out. Um, but, you know, it's all worth it. It's all worth it for sure. Congratulations, Danny. Go celebrate Danny, with your team. Thank you. <laughs> For Danny Green, it took everybody, and he had looked some huge shots earlier uh, in the finals, in the game, and, and the defense, the on-ball defense, and some of the plays that were made. But to go back to what Max said, it, it all begins with the guy who was the Kawhiatist, if you will, MVP you're ever going to see, despite the fact we're talking top five all-time points in a final and all these other crazy things. When you look at Kawhi Leonard, we knew that he had improved and become one of the better mm -hmm. players. But... When you think of a year to a year, right? Think about this, guys. Grant talked about it a year ago. We never would have thought, right, about the Raptors. What was the conversation? If I asked you guys a year ago, let's talk to some people about Kawhi. Oh, well, he's not tough. He don't want to play with San Antonio. Remember all that stuff? How about what happened in a calendar year for him, public opinion and rhetoric-wise, to where we are now? Oh, it's, it's been, you know, a, a total zero to 100 change in terms of the way he's thought of and perceived by the general public. Now inside the NBA in terms of the 450 players that are inside the NBA Grant Kevin you know those guys never lost respect for him and they always knew who he was as a player as a leader and a respected champion from being in San Antonio. When he got here to Toronto what he did was he stamped this organization with his championship knowledge his championship pedigree. He and Danny Green, I thought, came in, those two as leaders, those two as champions. And then when they added Gasol, I thought they added the right chemistry in terms of knowledge that play in big moments, understand big moments, know what to do, and don't panic. And Kawhi was yeah. always the guy who led him quietly, and when his voice was needed, it was added, but his play was perfection. Yeah. They became a business-like team because of Kawhi Leonard. He walked in, took care of his business, and walked out of the arena. Yes. There's no jumping around well, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> then he, did, he came to the next day at practice, did his job, did his work, worked on his game, beat somebody else that night, and went home. I mean, he just yeah. he just went about his business the way a champion goes about his business. You can't get excited every single time you make a basket. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's a lot of baskets to be made. But he played so well. But I, I saw this team become more resilient, just a, a little bit tougher, a little bit more business-like. And that's why they're champions right now. You don't you don't get a chan uh, chance to hold that trophy up unless you've got a lot of business-like guys on your team that understand that this is a tough road and you got to go get it. You guys make all great points, and I agree. But the thing that's surprising, you know, going back to this time last year when the trade was made, not just the narrative being negative, but he had been out for a whole year. Yeah. And as someone who's been out for a whole year, you know how difficult it is to get your in from day one and took over this team, as you said, not just in terms of leadership, of confidence, of the business like approach, but his game. I mean, he came in and yeah. it almost like he got stronger throughout the season. I remember doing a couple games uh, back in February with Isaiah. We were in Toronto and the resting and, and sitting out those 20 some odd back to back games and you kept thinking when are they going to allow him to, to get his rhythm particularly as we roll into the playoffs and, and he's going to be needed day in and day out. Well I'll tell you what that strategy worked because he yeah. was 
at his best took his game to another level and how do you get hurt sit out a year and come back better your ball yeah. handling's better you're yeah. finishing around the rim your ability to pass and find open guy. like his all around play on the offensive end he didn't come in with that kind of you know game and he's developed that That's a self made game. And that's been as impressive as anything that he's done throughout this this season. You know what Grant the other thing that that I thought he did when he got to the Raptors is we always talk about Kawhi as a two way player. I think he demanded that everyone becomes a two way player. Mm. And when you look at they have six first second team all defensive players on their team. So defensively what they did in this series. We kept waiting for people to get open couldn't wonder why they couldn't get shots Well, Toronto's defense was stellar and then offensively guys started stepping up as Golden State said there's somebody on, on the Raptors every single night. It's a different player. Yeah. Tonight Lowry was the was the, the guy that got him started uh, game game one or game two. You know they had somebody Siakam else. Siakam game one yeah. is 32. Yeah so it's, it's all it was always someone yeah. different and Kawhi was the constant. But on the defensive side of the ball, they were always constant. And one, one thing, thing that's I, been—go ahead, Mike. Okay, just really quick. quick, let's give them credit for being high IQ players too. Yes. Because dumb players don't play good defense. <laughs> dumb dumb, dumb players, people get you beat they, <laughs> all the time. And th these guys were able to put in different sets, different stuff, switch on the right people, knew who they wanted to leave open, knew who they wanted to take wanted to take shots, who didn't, who they didn't want to take shots. And executed it perfectly. So that shows to me they're all wired in and they all can think the game, which is a huge part. You, you very seldom see a, a low IQ dumb team win, <laughs> well, especially in the NBA Finals. The other teams certainly high IQ, high in culture, will, and spirit, all led by Steve Kerr at the podium.